you to another episode of Hope Restored. I hope that you have had a great week, and I am your host, Missy Dale, and today we're going to talk about stay at your post. Um, I was given the privilege of speaking on this um, Sunday at our church at Lighthouse, um, and I just feel like it's a pressing thing right now of staying at your post. Um, and what does that mean to to stay? The staying power. Um, staying power is if you define it, it is you know no matter what is going on, I'm going to stay. I'm going to stand firm. So that would mean like in your in your marriage, you know, no matter what is going on, um, mind you, abuse or anything like that. That's a different subject. But if I'm just mad at you because you didn't put up the dishes, you know, I'm not going to just leave. I'm just not going to take off. I'm going to be there in good season and and in bad seasons, um, staying power that no matter what it looks like, I'm going to stay. You know, we live in a world where, um, it's easy just to give up. If you're not good at something, just give up. If, um, you know, the relationship is not the greatest, just end it, you know? Um, and I believe that we kind of lost that, uh, ability to stand firm, to, uh, stay, um, in that staying power. And I really believe, I truly believe this, y'all, that um, we can only have staying power if we have a deep, intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. That is the only thing that is going to help us to be able to stay, to stand firm, and especially, um, you know, with the coming days ahead, to stand firm. So stay stay at your post. And what is post? It's a military term that uh, means your place, your task, uh, your assignment, uh, your position, that it, it all evolves around the post. What is it? What is the responsibility that God has given you? And each of us have a responsibilities as children of God. If we're in a relationship with Jesus Christ, you have some things that is our responsibility. Um, one of them is to, uh, to help orphans and widows. That's a, something that is in the Bible that is across the board. You know, you don't have to be the preacher in order to do that. It's, it's each and every one of us. So I want to go back to that, uh, staying power. And I have a few notes. So if you look at me, sees like I'm looking down, you're right. I am. Cause I want to stay on point on this. Um, so our staying power is, uh, the ability to maintain, to persevere, to push through in activity or commitment, despite fatigue or difficulty despite fatigue or difficulty, that we persevere no matter what. Y'all, there was a season in my life that it seemed like I was hit with medical issues upon medical issues upon medical issues. It wasn't anything huge, you know, praise God for that, but it was just one thing after another. And I remember being so fatigued and so worn out, but God, you see, he allowed that to happen. I don't believe that he was the one that said, um, I want you to break your ankle and I want you to have be blind for a few months and I want your gallbladder to act up. Absolutely not. But he sure did allow it because in those moments that I was pretty much bedridden for, uh, I would say almost a year of my life with it being back to back, um, I had to stay still. And it was the... Um, what I needed to do in that season. And looking back, it's so funny how, you know, at the time you can go through things and you're like, why, 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 you know, um, why am I, I blind? Why, why, um, is my gallbladder acting up? Why am I having knee surgery? Why have I broken my ankle two or three times? I'm not that clumsy, really? Like why? And, uh, looking back, I needed, like I said, I needed that saying power and I needed to be connected to the father. And I was able to do that. I had all the time in the world to dig in into my relationship. And you know what? I needed that year of my life because the following year was when I would go through a season of loss, loss of a lot of things in my life, loss of homes, loss of relationships, loss of ministry opportunities, loss. And had I not been in that year of on my face before God, being still. I don't know if I would have been able to go through that um, very well. Now, I didn't do it the best, but um, God was there and he was preparing me for that season. I hope that makes sense. 
And I use the word hope a lot. Y'all, what is wrong with this? It's hope restored. And I feel like I say hope like 5 million times. Um, You're just going to have to bear with me, I guess. And so how can we have that staying power? How? It's by connection with the Father. It's a deep personal relationship with him. You see, Jesus um, was talking to his disciples at the Last Supper. Or no, no, I'm sorry. Take that back. I am wrong. It was uh, before all of that happened. Um, He was just having a conversation and he asked them, um, all 12 of them, who do people say that I am? He didn't say it personally at first. He said it like, who does the world say I am? And uh, they chimed in and said, you know, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist. And some say you may be a great prophet like Moses or, or something. And then he turned it and he said, but who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? And I believe that is a question that we must ask ourselves. Who is Jesus to me? You see, we can rely on our uh, parents' religion, their relationship, but it's not going to get us anywhere and it's not going to have that staying power and it's not going to get us into heaven. We can't hang on to their coattails. We got to understand, we got to We got to figure out who is Jesus to me. You see, sometimes people come to the Lord and uh, they want him to get them out of jail, um, meaning getting them out of jam. And so to them, Jesus is, get me out of this jam. And then whenever uh, he doesn't come through in that way, that you're still experiencing, you know, life, because we know the Bible says in this world, we will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. They get disillusioned and uh, quickly leave that relationship. Or um, Jesus gets him out of the jam, and uh, then there's no connection with the Father anymore because he did what they wanted them to him to do, of course. And what do I need Jesus for now? And anybody that's been a, an, in a relationship with the Lord any length of time know that that is not staying power, that we have to. We have to know Jesus. We got to figure out who he is to us. And he must be everything. You know, everything to us. Because there's going to be seasons in our lives that we go through trial and difficulties. There's going to be seasons in our lives where we may not feel the presence of God. But when we know who Jesus is, we know he's a good, good father. And though we don't feel him, We know, we trust who he is, the characteristics of who God is, and that is what we can stand firm on, and that is staying power. How do we do that? Through connection with the Father, getting to know him in his word, digging in, memorizing it, because that is your weapon, y'all. That is how we fight against uh, negativity. That's how we fight against the enemy. That's how we fight in um, any type of health diagnosis. If we got one, we know what the word says. By his stripes, we are healed. We're standing on that promise. If we have bills that can't be paid, you know, we know he uh, can supply all our needs, not wants, needs according to his riches and glory. Um, we know that he's closer to us uh, than a brother, that he's a faithful father and he's a faithful friend. We know that. Um, you see my husband, I love him and I don't have to, to be around him every day, 24 seven, um, to know that he loves me, to know that, um, that he has my back to know that, um, he's praying for me or to know that, you know, this relationship is strong. I don't have to be around him 24 seven. I don't have to feel his presence to know that. I just know that because that's who Jeremiah is. And it goes so much deeper with Jesus. We can know him in an intimate and personal relationship that even though things aren't adding up like we would like to, the puzzle isn't being put together as quickly as we'd like to, the dreams and vision that God has given us is not coming to pass, but that we can still trust him because we know what his word says and we can stand on it because God is not a liar. And so that is staying power, staying at our post. Our uh, place is, our proximity to the Father is being close to him. You see in Colossians 2, 6, and 7, it says, therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. You see that rooted means to become stable, 
That established means to make stable. We can have stability, you all, no matter what is going on around us. We can have stability. We can be made stable. We don't have to go through a, um, a type of, you know, emotional roller coaster because we know who Jesus is. We're connected. We're deeply rooted in him. We have a relationship with him. It's not just a one time a week or once a month relationship. It is a daily walk with him. And when we do that, when we take up our cross, when we die to self and we just remain in him and his words remain in us, we can have that staying power. Amen. And it goes on. Um, I like the message version of that verse, Colossians 2, 6 and 7. It says this, my counsel to you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. You received Christ Jesus, the master. Now live him. You're deeply rooted in him. You're well constructed upon him. You know your way around the faith. Quit or you know your way around the faith. Now do what you've been taught. School's out. Quit studying and start living it and let your living spill out to Thanksgiving. You see, I, I like that last part. You know your way around your faith. You know, sometimes I'm really good at telling other people like how to, what to believe in and what to stand on. And, and uh, they're going through a trial. I can be quick. This is what you got to do. You got to worship. You got to read your Bible and you got to do all this. And then sometimes when the same stuff has happened to me, I'm like, Oh no, <laughs> what is going on? Why is this happening to me? You know, it's easy to talk about it. I know my faith. I know the word, but there's something about applying it and doing what it says. You know, I can study and I love to study the scriptures. And I've studied a lot through the years and I know what the word says, but there's a difference between knowing it and knowing it. And uh, sometimes we just got to say, you know what? I might not be feeling this right now. I may not be feeling uh, your presence right now, but I know what your word says. I'm going to quit studying it. I'm going to take the test now and I'm going to walk in it. And I feel like that's, you know, the truth of what, what God wants for us is to walk in him, to live him, to breathe him in, to be the very hand and feet of Jesus Christ. That is what he wants. And we got to be stable. We have some stability to be able to do that um, in the world around us. We got to do that, you know, sometimes in our own home, like these kids are driving me crazy. You know, I need some stability. I need to need to know um, that I'm connected to the branch. And I can only do that if my proximity to the father is close and through the word of God, through, um, you know, worship, worship when I'm not feeling it. Worship when tears are rolling down my face, and it may not necessarily be at all of who Jesus is, but just because I'm releasing some things to the Father and knowing that he has the best interest at heart. You see, being rooted in Christ means you're going to be like an oak tree. And uh, we know oak trees are strong trees. Their roots are probably really thick, and they're in the ground, and they're sure and steady. You see, though, but when the rains and the storms come, You can see that the oak tree is affected by it. Their branches, they're moving. There might be some leaves falling off into the ground, but the structure, the trunk of the tree, it don't move. It don't waver. It does not, it is not affected because it's got some stability. Its roots run deep. Y'all, we need to have our roots running deep. We need we need that. And I think I'm saying we need a lot, but it's it's so true um, to have that personal relationship. How do we do that? Um, first we got to repent. We got to turn away from, um, our sin. That's, you know, to repent is to do a 180 and to stop doing, um, the sin that we know, you know, we all know when we're convicted, it's, you know, to say, God, I'm sorry. And I give my life over to you hundred percent. It is yours. And, um, and just after that, you know, ask him into our hearts It's as simple as that. You know, they that call upon the Lord shall be saved. We call upon you that you, Lord, will be Lord of my life. That um, this day forward, you're the boss. I take the back seat. You lead, you guide, and you direct. And um, how do we uh, start building upon that relationship? I'm going to say it again. It's children's church answers, but they're the truth. It's getting in the word. Getting in the word. That is your letter from God himself to you about what you need to do and how to do it 
and the whys and the whats are all in the scripture. And um, it is our weapon. It is the sword that we use. You know, our words matter. And if we want to combat the enemy, we want to combat, you know, the things that are going on in our lives. We need to know the word and speak the word out loud. Um, prayer. Prayer is, is key. It's vital. The Bible says we're to pray without ceasing. You know, that seems like a huge thing, but in, in the whole, um, you know, st- the whole thing of it is, is pretty simple is, you know, no matter what I'm doing, I can, I can pray. I can seek father, the seek the father. I can do that when I'm washing dishes, you know, um, maybe frustrated because I have so many dishes. Y'all do you have so many dishes. It seems like every day it's like every dish in my cabinet is in my sink. And I'm like, really? And I can be, I can grumble about that. Or I can say, God, the father, thank you so much that I have this uh, house and I have these children and that you've blessed me so much that I have food on the table. Um, and um, these dishes that are messy, that means there's life in my home. And I thank you for that. Um, and then with prayer, it's, it's not just one-sided. It's not just us talking like I am right now, but it's setting and listening to what the father says because he speaks. He may not speak like, hey, this is what I want you to do, but he will speak to your spirit, man. Uh, a lot of times God uses Max, my eight-year-old, to speak to me. Uh, the other day, just out of the blue, we were driving to school, and he said, Mama, I know how to, to heal a broken heart. And I was just like, what? You know, how? And he goes, you just need to love him harder. And, uh, and you know, just for an eight-year-old to even be thinking about healing of a broken heart, I felt like, you know, it's probably the Lord's talking to me right now about some things. And I know that's what it was. You know, I was, my family's going, been going through some, some hardships and, you know, some of us has some broken hearts and, uh, may not, you know, people with broken heart may not be the funnest people to be around. Cause sometimes, you know, we know hurting people hurt people. And, um, God through my eight year old son was saying, Hey, this is what you need to do. You just need to love them harder. You just need to love them with my love. And then Max goes on and says, and if that doesn't work, they need heart surgery. And, uh, you know, he may have been thinking about, you know, a doctor going to a doctor in a hospital and having uh, surgery, but you know what that is. That is God the Father coming in and healing a broken heart. The Bible says that he is close to those that are in a broken heart and have a crushed spirit, that he can be the ultimate healer. And sometimes, you know, if we can love people, but then we pray that the physician, God the Father, would heal every part of their heart. And uh, so, you know, sometimes that's how God can speak to you. It's maybe through a child. Maybe it's even through uh, a Facebook post, you know, that you read and that you've been praying about something and someone posts something that speaks to your spirit man and you feel that within you. Well, guess what? That's God speaking to you. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. So prayer, it, it goes one both ways. It's not just us blabbing and grabbing. It's us believing and receiving. And, um, oh, that's kind of cliche, but I kind of like that. Um, so, um, you know, we gotta, we gotta stand, stay firm. Um, we gotta stay at our post, you know, our post are our place of, uh, of responsibility. And, and what is it? What is your place that you're stationed at? What is your post? Your place is in Christ Jesus. I want to challenge you this week to look at every scripture that has the word in Christ in it. There are so many promises. There's so many things that we have access to by children of God that we can connect with through relationship with Jesus that we have the authority in, and it all involves with being in Christ. That is the place where we are stationed. We've got to stay there, connection, connected to God the Father. And what is your task? What is it that you have been assigned to? Well, it's all different for each and every one of us. You know, when you come to the roots and bolts of it, like a call on your life, it may not be what um, God has called me to do, but he's called you to do. You know, a teacher. A teacher is a God-given position, um, a task. That is a place where um, you may have responsibility. It may be a housewife right now or or a stay-at-home mom. I bless you for that. You know, that is your task to raise up those babies in the way of the Lord. Um, And each of us, though, we do, every one of us has a task that is universal. It's across the board. It's to share the love of Jesus. It's to share the love to those that are brokenhearted, those that have lost their way, 
the unlovable ones that we love. We love everybody and we love Jesus. And so that is across the board universal. What else is it? Tell everybody about Jesus. What has he done for you? Um, How has he worked in your life? That is our task. That goes across the board. It's not just for the preacher. It's not just for the evangelist. It's not just for the teacher. It is for everyone. How about, are you an intercessor? Are you a watchman? Um, You know, we need you to be interceding. We need you to get um, the warnings from God the Father. We need you in your position, in your task. And, uh, but across the board, it's taking care of orphans and widows. It's uh, to, um, you know, we we each know to worship the Lord, uh, to pray, to seek his face and not his hands. Um, We are, uh, have a a task to do. And the finally your post is your position uh, that you were appointed to. What position are you appointed to right now? Is it you a, a preacher? Are you a teacher? Are you a mother? Are you a father? Are you a husband? Are you a wife? Are you a child? Are you a brother? Are you a sister? That is, you're appointed to that. And that has a responsibility that we just don't give up on our family and our friends, but we fight for them and we fight the right way. We fight with the word of God. Um, and so we need you in your place and in your position and, um, and standing firm, that nothing move you, that you are the oak tree, that you are stir, um, steady. You are, um, you know, if, if you're battling something that, you know, okay, God, I'm battling this, being honest with them and say, I am struggling in this area and I need you, but you're going to be sturdy and you're going to be stable because you're rooted in Christ. and you know who he is at the end of the day, you know, if you're struggling today with, um, just feeling less than, or, um, feeling like, you know, um, maybe a little depression or, or uh, just disillusioned because you're like, you know, I thought it, I thought things would be different. Um, stay firm. Stay, have that staying power that if God called you to it, it's going to happen. Um, you just may be in the waiting season. And I had a word yesterday I woke up to that God said, you know, sometimes when we head into our promised land, we can't take certain behaviors. We can't say, take certain things within us into that promise. So that waiting period is a time to reflect and it's time to, uh, to, um, for the potter to, um, make you into the vessel that he has designed you to be because you see God is the power and we are the vessel. Um, it's never that we're the power. It's always him. It always comes back to him. And so I just want to close today with um, just just some encouragement to uh, stay at your post. And um, if you've left it, if you're like you're listening today and you're like, you know what, I've backed down. Um, I've been there. I've been to the place where I've backed down from my post and it was a slow fade. It was, you know, uh, not getting in the word and not uh, praying um, as as often as I knew I needed to, and then um, uh, not going to church like I should, not assembling together with our my brothers and sisters, and slowly but surely, the next thing I know, um, I'm looking and I'm like, wow, I am far off course right now. But it always happens in a slow fade. It always happens with just a, a, allowing just compromises, little compromises here and there. And here's the thing about God though. God can take even that situation and make it into good. All we've got to do is say, God, I'm sorry that I abandoned my post and uh, forgive me repentance and then get back to it. Get back to the responsibility that you have in Christ to be an ambassador for him. And so I just want to pray, God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for what you're doing in the hearts and lives of each and every listener. God, I pray that um, your word would be alive and active, Lord Jesus, and that, God, you would cut through um, to the very heart of of us, and, Lord, that we would just um, serve you faithfully. You know, because you've done so much for us and you're such a faithful God, God. I pray that our faith would rise up, Lord Jesus, and we would have connection with you and that we would remain in you and your word would remain in us and that we would produce much fruit, Lord. God, that we would come back to you, Lord Jesus. God, I pray for repentance upon my heart, Lord, that I would um, not give in to discouragement, but God, it be encouraged, be strengthened in you. And I praise you and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Thank you so much for joining um, Hope Restored, and I hope this blessed you. Um, and I just want to encourage you, if you don't have a church home, uh, we at Lighthouse would love to have you. Um, our church services on Sundays at 8 o'clock for the traditional service, um, and then 10 o'clock for the more contemporary service. We also have discipleship at five o'clock with our pastor, Pastor Tim. And then at 630, we have prayer, corporate prayer, and it's it's a powerful time. Um, Wednesday nights, we have family night of adult service, youth service, and kids services at 630. Uh, we would love to have you. Um, if you do not have a church home, uh, please come and, and we will save you a seat. Um, and I would love to do a shout out for Larry Hanner. He's got a podcast, Tongues of Fire. Go check it out. You will be blessed. And uh, thank you so much for joining, joining me today. God bless you.